Good morning, everyone. This is Mary. You're watching another little piece of my art. Today, I wanted to flip through this coloring binder for you a little bit slower. This video was requested by Misty. And since I don't have the ability to color right now, I thought this would be a good time to do it. So, uh, I apologize if you can hear a TV in the background. It's someone else's home and, you know, I have to let them live. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, I've had this binder since, um, well, college, but for coloring, I've had it since I started. And the way I decide if something is going to come out of the book and into a binder is uh, by a few different criteria, I guess. Um, like, for example, uh, if the book falls apart on me and I just get tired of, you know, trying to stick it back in the cover, I will just put, them, put the pages in here or... Sometimes I, I will get a book and there's only like say half or less pages that I like and I know that I'm going to pass the book on to one of my kids or one of their friends. I'll just go ahead and, and remove the pages and keep them to the side and pass the book on. That way it makes it less cluttery in my home. So uh, that's what you're going to see here. And, uh, whoops. Yeah, I had straightened this up after Misty asked me to do the video. Apparently, I didn't straighten it up that much. So, I'm not going to tell you every single thing that I've colored with because that, you know, would be longer than I have to film. But I will uh, say tell you some things. Um, this book here has an entire flip of it in my, uh, let's see, coloring tag, uh, Candace's coloring tag video. I'll link that video below if you want to see this one flip through, but if I do that as well, it will make this video once again too long. So hang on a second. Let me take off my uh, sweater here. It's getting warm, you guys. It's 57 degrees out, but it's not very sunny. And um, now we're going to have a glare, it looks like. So maybe I will just pick you up. So this phase here was when I was way into gel crayons. I still have those, the gel crayons. They're a lot of fun. But like this page, you know, this was when I had just Dollar Tree books only, um, gel crayons. Uh, the the um, glittery stuff is Dollar Tree glitter glue. So, you know, I didn't have a lot of nice things to use at that point in time, but I still made it, you know, fun for me. Uh, this is a this book here was an animal. Let's see, art therapy animals, and uh, the whole book is in here. I I did color in the whole entire book, but it did fall apart. So I think the gel crayons again. And sometimes on the animal books, I would paint the backgrounds with acrylic paint because I did have some acrylic paint at the time. Here's that Marjorie Sarnat book that everyone seems to have either. Either the owls or the cats. Lots of details to do. You can tell I just, I didn't even, you know, really think about backgrounds at the time. This page always makes me laugh because I thought I was doing so well. And when in actuality, I forgot to color that entire <laughs> mushroom. I went and did all of the stickles and everything and then forgot that I didn't color that mushroom. So I just left it that way. This is a vintage Snoopy book, you know, Peanuts book and gel crayons. Um, I did use regular crayons too, it looks like, but yeah, yeah, here's that Marjorie Sarnat cat book that a lot of people own or did own in the beginning of Coloring Journal Journey, and then some of the, I used a lot of this Dollar Tree kind of plasticky washi tape that they sell. I guess at this point I must have realized you don't have to color every little detail and so I just started coloring big blocks of color on these uh, doodly pages. This one looks like I think I must have gotten super tips at that point. That's what the background looks like to me. Um, I noticed with these Kappa books from the Dollar Tree that this, and I'm going back through here, this has happened a lot. Um, where I have used something. I don't know, I, I can't remember now what it was I used to try to blend out the gel crayons, 
but over time, this paper is so porous, it's like newsprint, that uh, over time, it, it bleeds. And that animal book again, I love this book. If I saw that book again, I would probably repurchase it. Here's one where I just thought, okay, well, I have to color every little tiny, <laughs> pretty much most of it anyway. But it's fun, and when you're done, it really it really comes alive, doesn't it? It's just having the patience to uh, color every little tiny bit. This background is those pearlescent type of watercolors that they sell at Hobby Lobby. They still have them. The last time I was there, I saw them. And uh, they, they make for fun backgrounds. You probably can't tell how like pearly that looks, but it's pretty pearly. Once again, um, that bleeding that I was telling you about, that happens with this Kappa type of a paper. Just something to look out for if you do try to blend things out. Um, I tried to blend out, and this is actual like kids coloring book newsprint, and I did try to blend things out and, and uh, made a mess on this one as well. Thought I would cover it with washi tape, but smart me didn't use the dark enough tape, so. <laughs> this was one of those Target dollar spot books. My grandson and I found like three different ones at the Target that were Halloween, and then like on, it would be a coloring page, and then the back would be a activity page. And him and I had a ball with those books. This is all just crayons. It's regular Crayola twist-up twist crayons, I believe. Here's back with the gel crayons again. You can see what a really um, nice, consistent coating pop of color gel crayons will give you. As opposed to, like, this is a regular crayon. And you can see the streaks that I have there. But the gel crayons are just, like, you know, bam, I love those crayons. I need to get those back out. Especially if you're going to take the time to blend them. They really do a nice job. This was a, like, del delicious, something kitchen-y book that I had from Dollar Tree. Now, does this make you start singing Monster Mash? Every time I see this page, I start thinking of that song. My uh, grandson didn't believe me that that was an actual song. I remember when we were doing this that I Googled that and played that. It's more from that kitchen type of a book I had. It had like little recipe cards you could color in the background and stuff. I took what I wanted out of it and passed it on to uh, to my daughter. She, she's got two boys to raise, so she can't afford to be buying like all kinds of extra things so a lot of the books that you see me haul I don't end up keeping many of them go to her after I take out you know some of the things that I want <clears throat> plus I'm not it had a lot of quotes and I'm not really a big fan of coloring words this one is done in all Crayola twistable pencils the whole entire page was twistable pencils and I just love the way they look just something about them. More from the animal book there. Uh, I think this was, I had gotten some like fl fluorescent colored gel pens. I don't have th those much anymore. Those are the ones that seem to be the worst for stopping and skipping and clogging up. So I kind of just stick with the uh, glitter ones nowadays. This one I remember doing in watercolor, the snakes, and then I came back over them and added details, you know, with pens and things, and painted the uh, the black background there. This one was twistable pencils, which they, they blend nice into one into each other when you're having like a big piece like this, and you want to do that kind of ombre or varig variegated look. Um, I wasn't the best at it at the time, but. I suppose we all start somewhere. Uh, I think this one was watercolor. Usually when, usually when the black lines are covered up is a way to tell that it is watercolor because 
it's the effect that kind of it does sometimes here I am back again with all those little tiny pieces oh my lord I remember doing these kind of pages a lot when I lived with um, an elderly family member and I would watch TV and and do this and I had to like constantly okay if this piece if this piece is yellow here let me hurry up and do that side so that I don't <laughs> so that they're not messed up and when I was staying with that family member I didn't have a lot of things I had a couple like school boxes just full of different supplies um, and and that kind of makes it fun when you're limited because for an example like uh, I maybe I don't remember this per se but this could have happened um, I wanted to do green but I didn't have maybe a lot of um, marker left in green so even though I was doing marker here I just went ahead and colored him in with crayon I'm not saying that looks great or anything I'm just saying that the textures together not something I would do now but it's kind of interesting because that almost gives you a different like a fur effect versus you know areas where you have marker so I don't know it's like they say that um what is that saying necessity is the mother of invention so when you don't have a lot of supplies it almost forces you to be a little bit more creative, which is fun, you know, but we all, of course, love our supplies. We all want to be able to, um, to have a lot of choices, <laughs> for sure. Crayola twistables there, pencils. And this was one of those Dollar Tree books, and, I mean, you can see whatever I use on the other side came through. It's just, it's, paper is to be really careful with that paper because over here I think the only thing that I see that would come through and it shouldn't come through is a little bit of glitter gel pen but yet you can clearly see right here how that comes through so so thin I just saved these because I knew someday I'd want to see how I did things before even though I mean of course I'd don't like it now but this was one of those um they had like the autumn gold the christmas um gold ma magic gold or gold magic mandelas you know they were from barons and dollar tree had gotten those books and this one was fun i did this all in autumn colors and i think i gave that a book to my daughter kind of right afterwards I have no idea what book that's from. From that kitchen book. <clears throat> Watercolor. This is a Dollar Tree book. It looks like crayons in the back there. And maybe all crayons. Yeah, it kind of looks like crayons, doesn't it? With some gel pen. Hard to remember now. That's from that kitchen book. And that's all watercolor. And again, this one as well, although I think that looks like a crayon right there in that uh, spatula looking or whatever that tool is there, probably there too, on the whisk. I have a full entire flip of this book on my channel. This is the... Doo -doo -doo. This is Adult Coloring Book Geometric by Vision Street. So, uh, this book fell apart. And this was one of the first books that I got. This was back when, in my area that I was staying at with my um, relative at the time, the, uh, there, you know, there's no Walmart in that town. There's no bookstores in that town. So when the whole craze of adult coloring really hit for me, you know, became into my awareness that I was seeing it on YouTube and I was like, well, because I watched Dollar Tree hauls even back then. I've always enjoyed watching Dollar Tree hauls and thought they were a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> so I saw, pe that's how the, that's how the whole thing came into my awareness. I saw people uh, hauling Dollar Tree coloring books. I was like, oh yes, that's that's a hobby I could get behind. So I would go to the Dollar Tree and um, anytime, sorry, I'm shaking. Anytime like a new one would come out, I would pick it up. And then when 
they kind of went past those little Kappa books with the newsprint paper, they started doing books like this. So, you know, when you don't have a lot of choice because this is what you can get, you just take it anyway. So I uh, remember buying this pattern one and being so happy that I could find something a little bit thicker, you know, on thicker paper. And uh, completing, I completed this one. I remember the person that I was living with shaking his head saying, oh, Lord, I can't believe you could sit down and have patience to do that. But it was a great way to pass the time if you have a lot of time. Um, this is from, oh, what's that animal book called? Yeah, I, don't, I can't remember, but this was for a color along that Olga Ronnie had doing your Chinese horoscope sign. So I'm the horse. I think this book I got at Bath and Body Works and it was different dogs. I took out the ones I liked and gave that to my grandson. Tula Pink. This was Tula Pink's book. I took out what I liked and gave the rest to my daughter, but I would think I might want to get that book again. That was kind of a fun she, she she's uh in England I think out of based out of England and I think she designs textiles. <clears throat> hmm, this one was some kind of Celtic book. I can't remember what it was called, but I remember giving it to my daughter's friend. That one was fun. This is uh again a mandala book I believe. Um, when I ripped it out, I had made a big mess out of the side. You know, I didn't use a ruler, so I just added some washi tape the other day. And when Misty asked me to do this video, I, I said yes, but give me a couple days to clean this binder up. Cause I, and thank you for asking me to do this, Misty, because otherwise, uh, I might not never have, <laughs> you know, with my laziness problem, I might never have, uh, went in here and, and did this little chore that was waiting on me. This is from a quilt book. I forget which one it's, what it's called, but it's Design Originals. He has washi tape on his lapels. This is, of course, Salvador Dali. Now I've removed all of the face quotes. Um, and then the book is going to be given to my daughter. This is just from a pattern book. I liked it. I thought it reminded me of, um, my grandma had a like, stop sign shaped, very strangely like, why was that there type of window in her kitchen? And, and it looked like that. <clears throat> this was from an Alice in Wonderland book that I did some of the pages. And then my daughter wanted it because she loves Alice in Wonderland. So I ripped them out and passed it on to her. It's from a pattern book. This one is from uh, something designed to color and frame. Um, I still have that. I just, I was tired of having the page just kind of floating around. I had it in the frame for a while, and then I put the one I wanted to color next in the frame. So I just put it in here. That way things are protected, you know. So again, with the Alice in Wonderland, like back when I didn't even think to uh, color in skies. <laughs> this washi tape I added to this page because it was also very gnarly looking. And it has little drinks on it, which I thought fit the theme here because it says drink me this one is from folk art design originals I believe I just got this one last year but I took out what I wanted and um, I'm gonna pass pass it on to my daughter either I already have or I'm going to I usually have a couple piles going for her this one is from a Victorian book this one was a lot of fun. My grandson and I did this one with water crayons, like big fat ones. And I remember us doing this and I started to do the plate and he's like, no, plates are white. <laughs> so we left plate white. That was from a woodcuts book that I got at Bed Bath & Beyond. Did I say Bath & Body Works before? I meant Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, I believe this one was from a Crayola book, some kind of surreal, surrealistic art, I believe. This one is from a Inspired Home, I think is the name of the book. 
And I've done some of the pages because John from Bibliophile Colorist also had this book. And he had a color along or a um, hashtag quite some time ago. This was the page that I did for that hashtag. So that was, yeah, January of 2019 that he did that. Um, so I did a few pages in it. And then a lot of the pages have just like it'll be a page of random chairs like floating in the sky and I probably won't color those but I'm going to keep it because it'll be great for collages so this one is not finished but I don't have this book anymore my youngest daughter bought this for me so I saved the page and don't want it to get messed up and I know exactly this is all Crayola Twistables I know all these colors by heart so I can finish this one whenever <clears throat> more Alice Yeah, more Alice. You can really hear my daughter's TV now, can't you? <laughs> more Alice. Yeah, it looks like I didn't get around to putting some tape on that one, but that's what I mean. They just, I didn't rip them out very nicely. I remember that day my daughter was in a hurry to leave and she wanted to take the book with her. So I was, I don't know why this one is in here. I, I other than maybe just because I think it's so cute and I want to make sure to finish it. But um, there is another one. Cardinal. Sorry for the glare, you guys. This book here was, oops, this book here was, um, it was like a book, and then it had journaling prompts in it. I forget the name of it, <clears throat> but it was a nice book. I just wasn't going to do it all. This one was Urban, Urban Sketches or something like that. It was a huge, thick, thick book that I got at Ollie's, and I liked some of the pictures, but not all of them, so I don't want to be greedy. I just take what I wanted out and uh, passed it on. Again, you can tell. I mean, I didn't even... Like, I don't know if that's the sky or a mountain or what, but I just didn't even bother. I'm just like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Oops, looks like I had to finish that one. I got some empties here. And then that page there is from a Wizard of Oz book that I did not care for. And the only page I colored was that guy there. So that book is now gone. Ugh. Um, <clears throat> this must be that, it could be that geometric book, or it could just be another one like it, but yeah, that one's done. It needs to go in. Okay, so I've got some pages saved from that kitchen book I was talking about. Like, how cute is that? So, 4th of July, you can do the, the bomb pops and the whole nine, so I saved it. There's like a Christmassy one, winter one. Apparently I thought about finishing that one and didn't. <laughs> and there is that one. So that is it, guys. That's all I have for you today. Hopefully by next week I can get back to coloring. All of the um, things that you look up online say, you know, if you're having this problem, you should brush your arm at least two weeks. So <laughs> I'm getting pretty bored. Hopefully it'll be, get better soon. I can get back to my routine because I'm really getting bored. But I thank you for requesting this video, Misty. And I thank all of you for taking the time out of your day to stop by my channel and watch the video. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.